There's a little bit of a competition, um, and there's a little bit of a history, um, actually, between the two of them, which we find out. It, it, then you understand a little bit of uh, the back and forth. But I think it's a really cool, it's a cool relationship that I didn't even think of um, that it would that they would write it that way. But it's pretty fun. Among the most famous maxims of Hillel the Elder was, If I am not for myself, who will be for me? If I am not for others, what am I? And if not now, when? It's a recognition that a person must take care of themselves and their individual interests while also observing the needs of their community, with an emphasis on urgency over complacency and unrealized good intentions. Meanwhile, some common advice given to authors includes, write what you know, and write for yourself. The assumption is that your writing will be more authentic and better informed if you're working from a place of utmost expertise from within the self. Aside from being the fourth best Superman writer in the glory days of triangle numbering, Roger Stern is most known for his Marvel Comics work, especially a lengthy tenure on the Avengers. To my knowledge, he's been married once since 1982, no divorces, and he cannot alter his size and density with a belt composed from white dwarf matter. I therefore find this comic perplexing. You would think that spending an entire issue on the beef between Ray Palmer and the man his ex-wife committed adultery with would perhaps come from a personal place. Yes, Ray abandoned Jean Loring after discovering the affair, and she went on to marry Paul Hoban, who proved to be much more inclined toward jealousy and domestic violence. There's some interpersonal drama to mine there, and Stern is oft acclaimed for finding the humanity in superhero stories like The Kid Who Collects Spider-Man and Under Siege. Yet this issue is more like a four-color episode of 30-something, which hadn't even been invented yet. Two issues earlier, Ray and Jean had shared a hug in the kitchen, as Ray was still dealing with grief over the destruction of the alien tribe he joined, including his yellow-skinned rebound chick that didn't play at all like some sort of gone native post-Vietnam narrative. It was like a macho 80s eat, pray, love with frog steeds. These jaundiced little people soothing the savage breast of a white boy in crisis, literally existing only so long as Ray needed warm bodies to stab with one implement or another. I don't know how long that hug lasted, but both Jean's second hug husband, Paul Hoban, and Ray's prospective love interest, Enrica in Negrini, managed to individually walk in on them and have baby breakdowns over it. One of them getting the wrong idea would be understandable, but for two separate individuals to come to the same conclusion, I think this may have been less Rashomon and more fear of flying. To paraphrase the poet Sisko, yong, y yong, 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 both Enrica and Paul individually interrogate and instigate, feeding especially into Paul's insecurities, until he's hurling accusations of infidelity and donning a spare shrinking belt Ray had given him before returning to the Amazon in one of the Sword of the Atom specials. Most likely, this whole thing was an excuse to mend that bit of ill-considered continuity, but having Paul travel through a phone line to assault a sleep-deprived Ray Palmer was more of a compounding than correction. Of all the shrinking characters, Ray's the only one that travels through phone lines. But now we have to add an asterisk. Also his ex's side piece. Further, the fight starts on page 6 and ends on 21? In a book that's been notably light on action, 13 pages go to the epic battle between a superhero and an attorney at law. Even with a host of handicaps, like Ray's only getting 4 hours sleep from spending the day studying humbug synthetic skin, or not wanting to hurt Paul, or being overconfident in handling Paul with kid gloves, but still, that's a lot of pages. Surely an untrained fighter using a shrinking device for the first time could have been subdued with a quick but instead things escalate from home invasion and assault to attempted murder when they begin sword fighting with a busted pair of scissors. Ray has a nom flashback and almost kills Paul while seeing him as a boundsman of Morlaid, just as police show up to investigate. Regardless, it's played as Paul was being a big dumb jerk who tried to wreck Ray's lab and cut up the humbug skin over a silly misunderstanding. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here in 2023 wondering why Paul wasn't even a suspect in Brad Meltzer's identity crisis. They could have dubbed him Red Flag and had him team up with Buzz Baxter in DC vs. Marvel. But also, the same Gene Loring that told Paul that if he left the house with a belt, he shouldn't bother coming back, then drove partway to Ivy Town in a sheer nightgown with a cutout from the cleavage of the navel held together by fishnet. Girl could get arrested running around like that. And did. When she got busted speeding with, I'm a superhero's ex looking to break up a fight in my negligee as her excuse. Girl, you all about that drama. Ray and Paul had to phone into the police station to get her release.
released, with a sad little panel of Paul surrendering the belt for bad measure. Returning to the opening quandary, who was this for? Was there a little seven-year itch in Raj's life he was working out in print? Was he writing what he knew, or was what he knew the loosey-goosey handling of domestic violence from period network television? Stern, thankfully, blessedly, takes the next couple issues off, returns to wrap up some storylines for another couple of issues, and then abandons the trouble series he launched to die three issues later. Was this issue just vamping to fill space and sort of kind of not really resolve a subplot? Didn't this book launch on the premise that the Atom was returning to superheroics in a post-crisis bold new direction that would see him pursuing the shady government faction responsible for destroying Drawing Miller Laid for reasons unknown. A year later, and the series is about negotiating book tours and resolving marital strife. If this was a series Stern was writing for himself, reflecting his life, what he really needed was couples counseling. If he was writing for the market, it's no wonder work started drying up in the 90s, with the Superman titles continuing to serve as a de facto welfare state. Hey, buddy, the comic industry doesn't do pensions, but we do have action comics. Want to write by committee a weekly adaptation of ABC Television's Lois and Clark for half a dozen? years? I think maybe it's the lead-in for 30-something. Boy, I love me some Timothy Busfield dramedy. There was a whole article in Amazing Heroes number 162 about course-correcting this title after Invasion to be more action-oriented. But we're right back into the big chill with aging boomers crying about their Ivy League educations and publishers' advances and having to choose between a genius scientist and a lawyer. I guess somebody thought that was an audience worth chasing, but it was stinking thinking. Chris Dunford, Chris Lydon, Dave's Comic Heroes Blog, Ed Moore, El Romero Romero, History of Comics on Film, Iowa's Joe Is, Jim Imbruglia, SCTV Forever, Just Julia Raul, MB, Mike and Send Aliens to Me, N. Matthias Moore, Nick Spence, Nuka Carl Quantum, Paul K. Bisson, Satin Tights, a Wonder Woman podcast, Tim Price, the Podcrasher, Tomas, Wayne Burroughs, and Xenozoic Files. The annual podcast crossover event celebrating the Justice League is back. And we're covering the 2007 Brave and the Bold series that started with Mark Wade and George freaking Perez and ended with J. Michael Straczynski. Throughout the month of May, participating podcasts will release special episodes on issues in the run. It all kicks off in the Overlook Dark Knight podcast. Follow the event on social media using the hashtag JLMay2023. Coming this May. JL May do 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 Brave and the Bold do 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 Comic Books do 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 Mephisto Hey! The preceding Adam-related program is a non-profit fan production. Any copyrighted materials contained therein are believed borrowed under fair use with no copyright infringement intended. Please feel free to leave comments either on the Power of the Atom blog or at Rolled Spines Productions WordPress blog. You can also send us Twitter comments through Commander Blanks, my personal account, or through the Rolled Spine podcast Twitter. Thank you for listening. <laughs>